Hi, my name is Nathan Kaplan. I'm the Assistant Chief Flight Instructor here in Denison. So today we're going to be talking about four major components of the Piper Seminole. We're going to start off with the constant speed propeller. So the constant speed portion of a constant speed propeller is that the propeller is trying to maintain a constant RPM. We have a lever in the airplane that controls what RPM we want to set. So let's say I set it to 2400 RPM. What the engine is trying to do is we've got a prop governor right here that uses oil to control how much oil is coming into the propeller hub and that will change the blade angle of the propeller. What that does is if we pitch up and the uh, blade starts to slow down, it will change the angle so that the engine can maintain a constant RPM. So one of the main differences when we talk about a constant speed propeller is what our throttle quadrant looks like. So our throttle quadrant here, you can see that there's an additional lever than what you see in a typical airplane. We've got this new blue lever here, and this is what controls our constant speed propeller. So if I wanted to take it to a low RPM setting, I could take one of the engine propeller controls and bring that down. And what that would do is it would tell our prop governor, hey, I need to put a certain amount of oil into the propeller hub to now change the pitch angle to maintain a constant RPM. So now that I've talked about the constant speed propeller, let's go ahead and move over to the right engine. So the right engine is unique because the right engine rotates counterclockwise. That's different than most conventional engines which rotate clockwise. The reason that's important is we have an acronym that you'll learn in your multi-engine training called PAST. The worst case scenario for us in most multi-engine airplanes is losing our left engine. Because we have a counter-rotating right engine, many of those detrimental factors of losing that left engine are mitigated because this engine rotates counterclockwise. So now that I've talked about the right engine, let's talk about the landing gear. So our landing gear system is an electrically activated, hydraulically actuated system. So our switch inside the cockpit, you flip it up and it raises the gear, activates the hydraulic pump and allows hydraulic pressure to raise the gear. The same thing happens when you flip that switch down, it'll lower the gear and a few safety mechanisms within the gear system are a squat switch, which prevents uh, inadvertent gear retraction on the ground. Another safety mechanism inside the airplane is an emergency gear extension, which when the gear's up, you pull that emergency gear extension knob and that allows gravity to drop the gear and releases all the hydraulic pressure. So the landing gear right now is currently in the down position. I'm not going to mess with the landing gear. In theory, if I raised it to the up position, nothing should happen. We've got what's called a squat switch, which will prevent retraction of the landing gear while we're inside the airplane on the ground but I'm not gonna test that today. As part of this landing gear system here, you can see that we have these three green lights. That's telling us that our gears are down and locked. If we are flying in flight and I see that one of these lights does not illuminate green, then we will start with some troubleshooting procedures to make sure that our landing gears are actually down and locked. On a takeoff, right, we don't wanna just keep our landing gears down while we fly, that would increase drag and be inefficient and can cause problems for the landing gears. So we would bring it to the upward position for cruise. When we go into land, we would check many, many and several times that we see all three green when we put the landing gear into the downward position. Now that we've talked about the landing gear, we're gonna move on to the back of the plane to the stabilator. So this is our stabilator on the back of the airplane. It is an all moving control surface, which on a typical airplane, the elevator is separated from the horizontal uh, stabilizer. So having this entire surface move allows for greater pitch effectiveness and greater pitch control on the airplane. So the way I would control the stabilator is just the same way I would control an elevator in a conventional airplane. I would pull back on the control and then push forward. And essentially, because we have a stabilator, that's creating a much bigger control environment for us so that we don't have to exert as much control on the yoke. All right, so that wraps up our video on the major components of the Piper Seminole. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave us a comment down below and we'll be sure to get back to you. Uh... Don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> so you don't miss out on future videos. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave us a comment down below. If you have... Ah. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay.
Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. I don't know why I can't get that when I combine it's it with okay. the other thing. It's okay.